Yes, uh, students, as you know, Arshita Gupta is in 10th C. Why, why she's not written in her class section, roll number, anything like that? I don't allow students who don't have their full, uh, you know, identity written. So please write it properly. Okay, so what I'm going to uh, discuss with you, well, first of all, it is general instructions for your paper. One thing, we all know it's a multiple choice test. Second, you're going to fill your answers on the OMR sheet. You're going to use the ball pen, either blue or black. Okay, ball pen, not gel because the gel might uh, spread and all, right? No pencil because we're not uh, letting you erase and everything, right? Secondly, do not uh, overwrite. Overwriting is you think one answer is correct and then you thought that no, I, I think the other option is correct. So you circle another one and you try to cross that out. It will not be marked because you have two circles darkened, right? So please think before you darken your circle. And here, one very important thing is do your, uh, uh, you can shift this side, shift this side. Yeah, so when both of you shift this side. What you can do is, or what you should do is, that as you read your questions and uh, you get your answers and you find your options, darken the circle simultaneously. Don't leave it till the end. You are not going to get extra time, uh, you know, for doing that, right? Clear? Am I clear? Yes? Is this clear or not? Because this is one mistake that we make. We think that in the end, we're going to fill the answers. We will not get extra time for that. So make sure that, yes. And obviously here it is because, uh, you know, like uh, the papers, if you see it in your revision tests also, for English and for other subjects, it's going to require a lot of reading. So spend your time in reading the question, finding the answers, rather than looking here and there and looking for the answers, right? So no one is going to help you because everyone is going to be busy in reading the questions and trying to attempt. Those who are looking here and there, that means they are already confused and they're not going to be much of help to you. So you try to find out the answers yourself, okay? Right, fine. And of course, make sure that you read the question number which is given. If it is 27 on the OMR sheet, the corresponding question you will circle. In case one thing goes here upside down or you miss anything, it is going to make all the questions after that wrong. Okay, so you have to be very, very particular about that. So one thing you have to remember, no overwriting, no whitener, no crossing and now don't put it as a dot. Sorry, I'm trying to print the examiner. I put a dot over here and then I'll darken something else. No, it is not going to be accepted. It is going to be a wrong answer. Okay, and of course, yes, for English, read the chapter thoroughly. Go to the back exercises. There are not back exercises. There are a lot of grammar exercises also. There are idioms and phrases and word meanings. So you might get questions from that also. So please, you might get questions similar to that. Not, not the same ones. Obviously, you won't get the same questions. So read that also. So what are you supposed to do for English? A thorough, thorough reading. That's it. There is no shortcut. Pick up your text. And read them thoroughly. Be comfortable. Be confident about the content. Any word meaning you don't know, look up the dictionary or the glossaries there. And the, you know, like uh, the footnotes that we have or maybe the side there, the meanings are there, go through that. For your poems, be familiar with all the poetic devices, right? Make sure that you know the meanings. The, learn the name of the poets. Right, and uh, Jenny, of course, uh, I, I would not say that you're going to get questions like name the poem and the poet and all, but still, just to be on the safer side, okay? You should be aware of that. Now, yes, so can we discuss the remaining uh, question paper? Do you all have the paper? I'm shedding the screen right now. Please let me know if you can see the screen. Can you see the screen? Yes, Shivash, give me yes or no, please. Can you see it? So we had discussed these paragraphs. We have done the questions also for this, I think so. Grammar part we had done. Even uh, writing skills we had done. Yes? Now let us start with the literature part. Now here, look at the way the literature questions are given. Can you open to uh, part five? 
Section 5, question 31. All of you, those who are here in the classroom, open to that question. Have you found it? Yes. Now, look at this passage. You will have to read it. You will have to understand it. Right? And reading is going to get take time. Okay? And be confident. Do not panic. You have 50 questions and 90 minutes which is still a very comfortable margin. Competitive exams, mein kya hota? it's neck to neck. You have, uh, you know, like you have 90 minutes and you have uh, more than that questions, right? You have uh, three hours and you have 150 questions, right? So please here, yeah, be very, very careful there and be confident and, uh, you know, calm and poised. Now read this now, let me come on, take out a minute and read it. Read it. But the decades of oppression and brutality had another unintended effect, and that was that it produced the Oliver Tambos, the Walter Sisilus, the Chief Lithulius, the Yusidadus, the Bran Fishers, the Robert Sobaques of our time. Men of such extraordinary courage, wisdom, and generosity that their life might, may never be known again. Perhaps it requires such depths of oppression to create such heights of character. My country is rich in the minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil, but I've always known that its greatest wealth is its people. Which chapter is mentioned there? Yes, finer and truer than the purest diamonds. It is from these comrades in the struggle that I learned the meaning of courage. Time and again, I've seen men and women are risk and give their lives for an idea. Okay, you know this passage, you have read the chapter, you would have read this once, twice, three times, so you're comfortable with the passage. What you're not comfortable with is other questions. Okay, so right now, let us see here, what is it that, what was the unintended effect of the long oppression? Choose the correct option, unintended. Intended with a purpose, right, purposefully. Unintended? Without any intentions, without any purpose there. What was the effect? It made the people indifferent to injustice. It made the people reject oppression. It influenced a generation to fight against injustice. It made people accept their oppression. C part. First line is absolutely very clear. The decades of oppression and brutality had another unintended effect. What did the rulers think? That they would control them, they would rule them. What would happen? They lose the desire to fight. But it produced even more stronger, braver people. Okay, absolutely correct. Yes. So C part is correct here. Yes. And now let's come to the next one. Men of such extraordinary courage refers to the people who liberated and abolished the party system, used the resources, no. fought for the country, freedom demonstrated utmost strength to oppose the system. Is it A or is it C or is it D? Yes, D. Let's see. Look at these lines, men of such extraordinary courage. Who are the men of such extraordinary courage he's referring to? All these people. And they are, it's not one person, they are personifying or they are there, you know, uh, what you can say, representing the people who have fought for the country, isn't it? Wisdom at that, their life may never be known again. Perhaps it requires such depths of oppression to create such heights of character. Right? So what is the correct answer? Refer to the people who demonstrated utmost strength to oppose the system. Yeah. Because it was not that one person raised their voice and the system changed. There were many people who raised their voice. There were many people who gave up their lives and it was then that change happened. Okay? Right, yes. Now the next question, Nelson Mandela com compares dash to diamonds. His countrymen, patriots, wise men, or the oppressed? Anyone in particular he compares? 
what anyone in particular he compares look at it. its greatest wealth is its people yes yeah but that, that is, uh, is finer and truer than the purest diamonds his patriots or his countrymen is he only talking about the patriots here or is he talking about the countrymen countrymen yes yes it's people he's talking about everybody that the people here are its greatest wealth he's not talking only about the great people that he has referred to okay so all the people are there important yes can you see the screen is it visible is it visible yeah because uh, i it sometimes have issues okay when Nelson Mandela says, I have seen men and women risk and give their lives for an idea, he means that they are stubborn, they never give up, they're committed, they are intelligent and proud. So, yes, so here, please once again be sure of the meanings. Committed, they are there, very consistent towards that cause. Okay, so it is committed, yes. Select the suitable word to complete the following. Oh, this is very nice. Depth. Heights. Compassion dash. What is the relationship between the two words? First two words, depth and height. They are similar or opposite? Opposite. So which word are we going to find for compassion? The opposite? So what is the op compassion is what? Kindness, understanding. What is the opposite of that? Oppression. Okay. So fine. See, look here. Identify the pattern over here. What is the relation between the first two words? And it's a very nice question, you know. These are kind of questions you get for your mental ability also. Right? It's a very nice, a good question, this one. Now let's look at the next one. Let me put it more clearly since no one believes that a 13-year-old girl is completely alone in this world. Who's the speaker? And Frank, yes. And I'm not. I have loving parents and a 16-year-old sister. And there are about 30 people I can call friends. I think so three times we have done this in the class already, right? So I have a family, loving aunts and a good home. No, on the surface, I seem to have everything except my one true friend. All I think about when I'm with friends is having a good time. I can't bring myself to talk about anything but ordinary everyday things. So it's there, the extract is given for you to identify. See, CPSC is going to make things so easy for you. Don't worry, we won't. We won't. CPSC will, we won't. Now from the diary of Anne Frank, why does Anne feel the following? No one will believe that the 13-year-old girl is completely alone in the world. Why does she think that? What does she mean this, by this? Completely alone. How is she completely alone? Yes, how is she alone? How, why does she think that she is alone? Because she does not have uh, true friends, right? Yeah, she is there, talk, talks to many people, but uh, she does not have true friends. Now look at it. People knew she had a family. Right? People rejected the idea of loneliness. She had several friends. She had a cheerful personality. Her life was comfortable. So yeah, wait, 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 which one? Why does Anne feel the following? People rejected the idea of loneliness. That's why. Then, what's the third one? She had several friends. What about the others? She had a family. How could she be alone? She had a cheerful uh, personality. How was it that she had no friends? Her life was comfortable. How was it here? Why not two, four, and five? Yes? Why not two, four, and five? Yes, anyone from home? Options, they go one, what is it? People knew she had a family. What is three? She had several friends. Her life was comfortable. Right? No one will believe that a 13-year-old. What, what factors are there which will make people believe that she is not lonely? She had a family. She had friends. And she had a cheerful personality. Now, tell me which option is. Tell me which option is it now? Is it B? Yes, it's B because ye factors here, this key current people cannot believe that she is alone. Look at this question. Why does Anne feel the following? 
no one will believe because any 13 year olds what are the things what is their life it's comfortable they have family they have friends they don't know what loneliness means so it's very difficult for people to believe that she could be alone okay right now select the most appropriate option for one and two once again what which one on the surface i seem to have everything except my one true friend this is okay fine this is what she's saying what does this mean you can say why she has no friends and doesn't truly really connect with anyone one is true two is false think think don't jump to answers read the options as i told you read the options first before finding the answers two is the opposite of one yes let's see let's see let's see one is the true and two is false one here yes that is true two is false i and doesn't truly really connect with anyone because she does have people who she talks to okay let's see two is opposite of one she doesn't connect with anyone and no except my one true friend one furthers the meaning of two one furthers the meaning of two look at the second part of first one except my one true friend second statement says and doesn't truly really connect with anyone right so it is elaborating on that so uh, and of course here yeah, by connection what does she mean talking with them making noise in the class then what is that connection that she wants yes sharing her deepest thoughts very good that is what she wants is she able to find that connection with the students in the class no she's talkative we know she's very talkative but it does not necessarily mean that a talkative person has uh, many friends okay talkative person might be popular but not necessarily having uh, you can say a true friend okay so found the answer from the options given below identify and tone in the extract is she restless who is a restless person lots of energy you can't sit in one place right i want to do this i want to do that it's up here they're restless dissatisfied she has so many things but even then is she scared of making friends of talking or is she hurt is she hurt has something happened and then it is hurt her okay hurt would generally reflect what maybe some incident has happened that caused her right maybe she did try to make friends and no one was friendly with her has she mentioned that so what is it then how many of you said hurt because we love to feel hurt this is the in thing nowadays is it ha huh? aajkal yeah being hurt is something now select the option which displays an example of having a good time having a good time means right uh, i had a good time with my friends in the picnic right so he is very successful having a good time in his life oh i i gave a similar example i didn't know that look at the options now first of all try to find out what is the meaning they are having a good time he is out for a picnic and they are laughing and singing together yes he is studying hard and oh no you are going to have a good time tomorrow onwards that way he is trying to convince his father to purchase the is, is it a good thing try to convince so oh, you have a good time convincing our new phone he just rescued an injured puppy is tending is he having a good time taking care of these injured puppies he's being kind he is uh, you know right like concerned so which is the correct option a is the correct option things that you enjoy doing when you're happy okay what do we get to know about and when she says the following i can't bring myself to talk about anything but ordinary everyday things this is the problem why she's unable to make friends because she cannot discuss her fears her worries her problems with everyone it has to be someone yeah so what does it she is proud of her ways generally you know what do we think people who don't talk much 
I don't mix up. We say it here. Oh, very proud, isn't it? Yes. She is struggling to strike conversation. She is unsure of her own thoughts. She is unable to have a satisfying conversation. Is it B or D? Why not B? She is struggling to strike conversation. She does have conversations, but she never has the conversation that is the kind of one that, that she wants to. Isn't it a satisfying conversation? Once she's able to share her thoughts, her fears, her worries, her problems, right? Do you think at this age we are able to share our thoughts? You want to talk, right? And you want to be understood. What happens when you're not understood? Who understands you more during this uh, period of life that you are going in this adolescent phase? Your parents or your friends? Friends? Why friends? Because they ha you have the same homework to do. Is it? You have the same problem? Yes, the teacher is there creating problems for all of you. Or uh, this uh, big life here, that short span of life, you've had a lot of problems, is it? Yes? Okay, so we need to talk. We need to discuss, right? What do we call this thought of, you know, need to connect with our friends and when we are under the influence of our friends, you know, there's a word for it, there's a phrase, you know, a term for it. What do we call it? Can you tell me? It's not related here. I'm just discussing in general. Yes. What do you call it? I said, what do you, you know, have you heard of this word or have you heard of peer pressure? Yeah, so you feel, yeah, I have to be like my friends. I need to talk to them. I need to behave like they do. And they're the ones who are going to give me the best advice. Right, so whether it is good or whether it is bad. Okay, right, fine. So now look at this one, money is external. Which poem? The ball poem, that it is mentioned there. He is learning well behind his desperate eyes, the epistemology of loss, how to stand up. Knowing what every man must one day know and most know many days how to stand up. Money is external. What does it mean? Wait. Money helps us purchase material things that make life worth living. Money promotes materialism and hunger for power among youngsters. Money only impacts a personal external environment. Money buys materialistic things and can be earned again when lost. Yes, so it is external, right? You, it can buy you material things, but it cannot buy you happiness. It can't bring back your childhood memories. It can't bring back those happy moments that you spent there, right? So money is external. Money is not, you know, like uh, able to achieve or bring you that happiness that is required. What does the boy learn by losing the ball according to the extract? What does he learn? So there are five options and you have to select the best one. Loss is the unavoidable truth. That is what the whole poem is talking about. Material objects can be replaced. Is he going to learn this lesson? So he says that a ball, a, a dime, you know, and I agree, you can buy the ball, but it is not going to replace that one. Okay. Money buys happiness. Is he going to learn this lesson? Losses in life can be prevented with care. A life continues despite losses. Only one? What about five? Yeah, but it is not in the correct option, right? So look at one is their losses. That is absolutely correct. But two and five. From that, two is not required, isn't it? Second option again, money, uh, material objects can be replaced. Losses can be prevented with care. No, there are some losses that are inevitable. You can't prevent them. So three and five, once again, three is strong. So there's only one correct option that is one, okay? The boy is learning how to stand up. What does this mean? This means that he's learning to be dash in the face of difficulties. He's learning how to stand up. Is he a toddler that he's learning how to stand up? Is he a little child that he's learning how to stand up? 
what does stand up mean once again to rise back after losses after difficulties after problem which word is there similar to that is it patient is it resilient what is it, what does resilient mean chandra agar negative marking hoti na to tumhare marks ko sutte kahan se and it applies to all of you don't make wild guesses here how to stand up after loss it is resilience and i've discussed this quality so many times yes defensive no a defensive means like of course here yeah in a protective sorry judgmental passing opinion passing your thoughts about that it is resilient yeah you're standing up once again if you lose something i you can't keep on crying you can't keep on mourning the loss right you have to move on that is you have to stand up and go on with life now which option is with speaking these lines who speaking an observer the boy's parent the ball salesman a friend because the poet is not mentioned there and he's saying yes i would not intrude so he is another person right so he's not there so it is an observer according to the poet from whom we mostly learn about loss whom do we learn about loss experiences right and of course life uh, gives us so many experiences now next is i followed casually hello again he said i gave you my most appealing smile i want to work for you i said but i can't pay you i thought that over for a minute perhaps i had misjudged my man i asked can you feed me can you cook i can cook i lied again if you can cook then maybe i can feed you he took me to his room over the jamna sweet shop and told me i could sleep on the balcony but the meal i cooked that night must have been terrible because anil gave it to a stray dog and told me to be off but i just hung around smiling in my most appealing way and he couldn't help laughing his story yes. yes and this is about when uh, hari meets anil and how he convinces him to take him home right and how he makes this judgment of his character and uh, how he thinks that i will be able to go with him even though hari singh followed anil casually it was a no no i followed casually did he do that ki okay theek hai mere paas koi aur jagah nahi hai to dekhta hu ka ye kahan ja raha hai or he decided i need to be with this man was it a bold step or was it a staged move so sure. staged kya hota hai staged kya hota hai jab stage pe aate hain actors and theater mein jab apne steps karte hain wo on the spot karne lag jate hain ya practice the before the practice so what is a staged move he had thought of it yes that this is what i am going to do this is staged move where he had decided see this man looks uh, good you know he looks well off he has money he seems to be careless which was very good for him isn't it right and as we know hari singh is a very good judge of character yes so it was a staged move or abhi humne reading kari hai you have not read Yeah, what about those students at home? Have you gone to sleep? You are not giving me any answers. I am not getting any responses. Yes, Divyansh and Arshit and Shivansh and Rishit and others. Where are you? From the following options, identify Hari Singh's intention behind the appealing smile. How many times has the writer mentioned appealing way? Appealing way. Why does he say that again and again? what was it he felt was very appealing about him smile appealing me appealing attractive yes convincing so what was it about the appealing smile kya hai uske piche deceit what does deceit mean 
डिसीट मीन्स धोखा या फेकनेस राइट ओके सो प्लीज ब्रश अप योर वोकेबलरी रीड द चैप्टर अगेन एंड अगेन सो या yes it's a stage move very nice so i uh, we meet tomorrow we we'll carry on with the uh, writing and grammar exercises so see you all and uh, study hard no wait 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 wait